Hi, welcome to Max tutorial number 46, video looping. All right, let's get a new window up here and let's get our, we're going to be using the inspector a lot today, I bet you. So let's just get the whole thing set up here for a full page of fun. All right, so video looping. Um, for those of you who follow along in my class, we've been doing effects and this and that, but what about when you want to just like run the video in different ways? You want to run it forward, you want to run it backward, you want to do all this different stuff. Um, you can use the new effects that Max 7 has, but let's do it the old way first because it actually has some control that um, the newer versions, it's more complicated to master. So let's get a JIT object up here by typing a J and then uh, QT dot movie player. Come on, what about dot movie? Dot movie, QT dot movie. Come on, thing. All right, zooming in so you can all see it so nicely. Um, I'm sure this will all fit on your screen much better than on mine, but uh, just so you can see it, here it is. And then, of course, we are going to want to play that in a JIT patcher window. So these are, these are the basic um, JIT patcher window. There we go. So you can just type J and PW, and you'll have it running. Okay. Then we need a movie to play. Um, I'm going to use the innocuous crash, crash test movie. So message. Um, what is it? Read crash test dot m o v okay so we know that when we read this jit qt dot movie will start read it will probably auto start and play it right away but we won't actually see it though we will hear it well i guess we can try that of course we can't stop it let's make another message called stop real quick here because sometimes it just drives me nuts. Okay, there we go. Stop. Okay, so lock your patcher and try it out. And there we go. Okay, stop that. Why can't we see it, everyone? Because there's no metronome. And so we unlock our patcher. We type in N. We type metro. Uh, we like 40 frame, 40 milliseconds because it gives us about 20 frames, 25 frames per second. And then this metronome will bang on the JIT movie and give us the pictures that we want to see. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to put the Am I getting too complicated already? Because I want the stop to uh, hit a zero that shuts the metronome off so that I don't have to... Oh, it doesn't matter. Just put a toggle there. Maybe we'll do that later. Okay. There's our toggle playing. Okay. All good stuff. And all this stuff can actually go on the other side so it's out of our way. Okay. Metronome read crash test movie and stop okay you're all up in the corners now we've got our we're reading the crash test movie we're playing the crash test movie we're turning the volume down a little bit so you don't have to listen to it or maybe maybe you don't, you can't hear it as well as i can but there it is so it's going to play our jit movie over and over again okay stop for a minute. Um, we want to be uh, DJs here, so what we want to be able to do is control the in point and the out point of this movie and whether it runs forward and backwards and all that other kind of stuff. So what we're going to do, the first thing, is we're going to decide how to control the direction that it's looping. That's really easy to do. Um, you could do it with the JIT attribute object, and I'll just pull it up real quick here. A truey, right? It's nothing until you connect it to JIT. Uh, QT.move. Uh, <laughs> not the patcher window, silly. To the movie. There we go. 
Now it's something. And if we lock our patcher um, and go to loop, it will, whoops, unlock that and make this really big. Okay. So now it, we can control our loop this way. And you can be satisfied with this. Really, you can. Um, uh, whoops. We don't want to, it's this one that we want to mess with. So here's normal. And then you can also have palindrome. And then you can also have uh, zero off. That means it'll just play and stop. Normal is goes round and round a circle. Palindrome. And then the playback limits. Hmm. Interesting. We're not going to deal with that. Palindrome goes forward and backward. So go ahead. There it goes backwards now. Though the music doesn't actually sound backwards. It is indeed playing backwards. And here I'll just demonstrate by changing this to normal repeat. It'll always run the same direction. And there it starts over. So you see the difference? One goes forwards and backwards and the other one goes forwards forwards, forwards, repeats, repeats, repeats. Okay, stop again. That thing just drive me crazy. The other way you could do this is to um, just type a uh, unlock your patcher, get a U menu, and fill the, the uh, put a prepend down here, new, prepend loop. And then um, knowing that zero was off, one was normal, and two was palindrome, you can just highlight this U menu. As I said, we would be using the inspector a lot today. Um, and come down here and edit your items so that uh, you got... Um, off, uh, loop, and palindrome, or however you want to, however you want to do it. So that'll end up coming out zero, one, and two when you, um, when it comes out of here. Because this only puts a number out here. It'll put a word out here. So supposedly now when we change this to loop um, or palindrome and look you notice the a true object is responding in kind so we've made this which um, you have more control over what you put in the U menu so I, I actually prefer it over this um, a true object so let's take our loop control and put it over here. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna command Y this and get it where it should be. I am not going to get rid of my loop object and I'll tell you why. Because there's a secret thing that I want it to do, which oh I'll destroy the the um, the sense of uh, foreboding and all that is I'm going to put the loop points up here and right now it's 0 and 2836 okay how does a, the Atrui object know that it's 2836 because the Atrui object is smarter than you and I can possibly realize and I'm just going to command Y that whoa that's terrible I don't like that at all there we go um, the Atrui object um, is a very smart object, and I'm just unlocking my patcher to resize this to the size where it's as small as we can, as it can be, and we can still look at it, and I can still stick it over here. There we go. Okay, these looping points are what we're going to want to deal with here, but the way I want to deal with them, I want to know what this big number is, and... Um, 
this thing isn't going to tell me because it's so stubborn. We're going to have to find a different way to get the JIT QT movie to tell us what that big number is. And the way we're going to do that is to send it a message. When we um, read the crash test movie, then the next thing we're going to do is say, hey, how long is it? And what we're going to, so what we're going to do over here is put another message that says uh, get duration and then we're going to connect that to the top of the JIT movie. So whenever we read Crash Test Movie now, out this outlet is going to come a message. Let's see what the message is. Da, 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 da. Okay, read the crash test movie. Hey! Duration is 2836. And somehow, this thing already knew that. But, we didn't. But now we do. So, this is our first fix, which is every time we read a movie, we're going to get the duration and spit it out down here. How can we get rid of the word duration? I will show you that right now. Let's get rid of it. We're going to type an N and get a new object and say route duration and then we're going to put another one in here just while we're here that is uh, time and then we're going to put another one in here um, just for the sake of argument uh, what else could possibly come out of there um, we'll put rate I'm not sure if we're going to use that one or not, but, you know, we're aspiring DJs, VJs, who want to be able to use this stuff. So, duration's going to come out of here, and it is going to, by default, be this larger number. But it's also going to do something else for us, and I'm going to show you what that is right now. Let's say that we wanted a slider that represented the endpoint, but we don't know... Um, how big to make it because we don't know how long the movie is. Well, this movie is 2,836 frames. So if we set our slider, type N, type slider, right? And then we're going to make ours horizontal so it reminds us more of the movie. Okay? Uh, connect it first and then... Okay? So, as you may recall, these sliders, um, I don't, I'm, I'm going to delete that and just redirect it so it doesn't constantly drive me crazy. There we go. Okay, now I don't have to look at it quite so intensely. All right, so I've got a slider here now, and what I want to do is tell the slider that number which is going to come out of there, I want that to be the, the whole range of this slider. This slider is going to be able to go from zero to some number. And so if I look down here, highlighting the slider, I see down here that the value size, if I send it a message size, that will determine the range. And that's what I really want. So I'm going to move this thing up a little bit and put a prepend, another prepend, prepend size. And if the message coming out of here matches duration, it's going to go into this prepend size, and then it is going to go into this slider. Okay? And then what comes out of this slider is going to hopefully go into this loop point thing here. But while we're doing this, we not only want an in point, but we want an out point. So I'm just going to highlight them both. No, 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 I'm not. I'm going to just highlight this one, and I'm going to drag it down here, and also connect the prepend size to it. And it's going to be our out point. 
Now we could uh, do a nice, you know, send in point and send out point here, but, uh, you know, that's beyond uh, what we need to do here. You can do that in your spare time. But what we're going to want to do is feed these two numbers into here. And the best way to do that is to use a pack object. So let's type n, type p, sorry, not pack, poc, p, a, k, so that if either one of them changes, both uh, it'll send out a message. P A K zero zero. And we stick that up there, connect it to that. Then we put the output of this slider. Route it around here any way you want that's simple. This is why I would probably actually put the uh, send object here. So I'm going to run it in the first inlet, the, the, um, for the punch in point, and then I'm going to run this one up there for the punch out point. In that second inlet, the right hand inlet. Okay, now let us see if this whole mess works. We're going to lock our patcher. Remember that none of this is going to work until this thing reads the crash test movie and gets its duration. So the first that's the first thing we want to do. Read the crash test movie and then let's try an out point here. So we have the It got shorter, didn't it? Let's make it really short. So the out point's definitely working. And the in point. Is also working. So now we have an in point and an out point. But what's actually annoying is we have no idea where the film is. When it's uh when it's going through all this. Okay, stop, you're driving me crazy. So we can't tell what the film is doing. So what I propose is that we do this. We say, hey, tell us what time, what frame are you on every time you play a frame. And then we'll run another slider that's also sized like these right over the screen. So let's uh, option, whoops, let's unlock our patcher. Option click on one of these. That didn't work at all. Hang on, I'm just going to control Z that so that it goes back. Um, oh, I must have uh, command clicked on it. I'm option clicking to copy it. Then I'm going to also connect it. I'm going to command Y that to make it square the, the patch cord. And then I'm going to click on this monster here, and I'm going to format it. So go up to the top toolbar and click on the format. And what we want is to get the background color. Um, I want to make mine completely transparent. So there's the background color. And then I would also like the, is this, uh, this is the on color. Uh, I don't want an on color either. I'm going to make that completely transparent. Wait a second. Where is the knob color? Is this the knob color? Off color. Why don't I... Do... Oh, I see. Let's go over, instead of messing with that, let's click on this thing again. Go over here um, and get the knob shape. Uh, no, rectangle. Rectangle. There we go. So, uh, lock your patcher and move this up so you can tell what, oops, lock your patcher and move this up. No, that's not the way I want it to work. I want, I want the I just want the knob color. Why can't I have the knob color? It is because 
I'm just going to, oh, I'm going to go indicator. There it is. That's what I want. Yeah, you want an indicator. I was confused by the indicator plus. So this is the indicator version. Do you see that? It's just a knob there. Okay. Um, so now we can go back to formatting this thing. Um, we want this to be, I'm going to click uh, some standard colors here, and I'm just going to pick red, uh, yellow. How about yellow? There we go. And um, then we'll resize this thing to be the same size as the video. And then we're going to have to tell this thing where the um, where the movie is at any given time. And to do that, we're going to have to say, um, make a new message over here, get time. And the metronome, which is banging on the JITQT movie, is going to then get a message that says, get the time, and spit the time out. And as you may remember, if uh, in our route object I already put time here. So if this matches time it will output that number and that means we're going to send that number directly to this slider. Did it get it? No. I hooked it to the movie by accident. Come on, come on. There it is. Bonk. Okay, make sure that's connected to the right thing. See it? Up there in the corner of your of your slider. Okay. Now, lock your patcher, and if you run this thing, the whole thing will run terribly. Um because until you hit the read crash test movie again. And look at that. Now, because it just started, we haven't um, actually put any points up here for these sliders, so watch what happens here. It'll go to that one and back to that one. There we go. Nice. Could it be any better than that? Yes, it could, but not by much. So now you can uh, run your thing, uh, just loop it so it goes around. And I will tell you something else. This um, attribute object is so smart that if you make your in point greater than your out point, it doesn't care, it just reverses them. So you can mess around with it all you want, but you Yeah, let's turn the volume back up here. All right, and that is the way to get your movie looping like a pro. So thanks for watching, and VJ on, and also Patch Well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.